Hey guys, Felix here. In this tutorial, as promised, we're going to simplify this code even further by using something called generate loops. Now before I go into generate loops, I first want to talk about what generate is. In Verilog, anything after these inputs here in the main meat of the module is called generate space. And in generate space, you can do things like define wires and registers. You can hook things up. You can instantiate modules that you've made, etc. Now, sometimes you're not in generate space like in here. In here you're assigning values to things, increasing things, but you're not actually generating or constructing any hardware in these. So a generate loop is a loop that we use to generate some hardware. In this case we could use it to instantiate or generate two of these same clock modules or very similar. Now to create a generate loop we're going to use a for loop which you may be familiar with but for it to know that it is a generate loop and not a normal for loop we have to define something called a genvar and I'm just going to call it I for a generic index. And then we have an optional tag here that we can use to clarify and just make the code more readable. I like putting generate here and then at the end, end generate. That just signifies nice and neat that this is a generate block inside here. For now we're going to use a for loop just like normal but we're going to use the predefined genvar. I is zero and we give it a condition. A condition I is less than four we'll say that'll give us zero one two three four different iterations and then we want i equals i plus one so after every time it runs through this generate loop i will increase by one and we begin and end just clean it up with some indentation all right so we've just made a generate loop. Everything that is inside here will get built four times. So let's delete this one. Now we're just down to one instance here, but it's going to be built four times. Now it doesn't do us any good to just build four identical one hertz clocks. So how about we make each of the four clocks double their frequency as they go down the line. So if we make this 2 to the i power, anything to 0 power is 1, and then we'll have 2 to the 1 is 2, 4, and then 8. So we should get a 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 4 hertz, and 8 hertz clocks out of here. And we'll just call this, I'm sure, clock 1 is fine, whatever you want to name it. And now, instead of hooking these up to the same wire, because at this rate, all four are going to get hooked up to clock one hertz and try to drive it, and that's going to cause problems. So inside our generate loop, let's create another wire and just call it clock slow. And we will hook that up. 
in here. And after we've defined our clock, let's go ahead and hook it up to the first four LEDs. LED I, so the first time this runs, we'll get a 2 to the 0 or 1 hertz clock hooked up to LED 0, and then we'll get 2 to the 1 or 2 hertz hooked up to LED 1, and so on. That means down here, we need to turn off everything else that is not currently being assigned. So if we have 0 through 3, because it'll stop before 4, we'll do this and turn those to 0. And we actually don't need 7 bits of 0. We can just universally say 0. And oh. We want to hook that up to the slow clock that we just generated here. All right. When we run this, we should get four LEDs in a row that are blinking sequentially at double the speed as they go down the line. And we got an error. Let's look for it. Connected to multiple drivers. Oh, that's very silly of me. We assigned 0 through 3 up here, and then we tried to reassign 0 through 3 down here. Whoops. Let's make that 7 through 4. Try again. All right, finished building and upload. Nice. As you can see, we've got one blinking at one hertz, one at two, one at four, and one at, I mean, it looks like eight. I can't tell for sure, but that looks pretty good. So there you have it. The generate loop is a special type of loop that you can use to build something, the same thing or something similar, multiple times. We didn't build the exact same clock each time because we were able to use the gen var to make some changes to each individual instance of the clock. And we were able to wire them all up from within this generate loop. Now, in the, the next tutorial, we're going to cover how to access some of these variables, some of these, like this wire, because we might want to get the output of one of these slow clocks hooked up to something else. And right now, it's just buried inside this generate loop. So we'll go over how to get those in the next tutorial. Stay tuned.